Games are packed full of artwork, iconography and memorable moments that can stay with you your whole life, so it's no surprise that some people choose to get game-inspired tattoos. As it happens though, the teams here at Outside Extra and Outside Xbox don't have any tattoos at all, be it from a fear of needles, terror of long-term commitment, or simply a wish to keep their limbs ink-free in case the lucrative world of forearm modelling ever comes a-calling. But that doesn't mean we can't daydream about the gaming tattoos we would get, hypothetically. Here are the game tattoos we totally have inked permanently on our bodies, if only the machines weren't so jabby. First up is Andy from Outside Xbox, and I'm guessing something Red Dead Redemption related. Let's see if I'm right. Well, Luke, it's not Red Dead Redemption. I have thought about that. Um, I said on a live stream, I think, that I would quite like John Marston's gravestone with like his date of birth and death on it. That'd be quite cool. But no, it's not that. Um, I think when choosing a tattoo, I'd want to honor a genre of games that uh, is probably my favorite genre of games, my favorite period, and, like the longest sort of series where I loved every game in that series, and those are the LucasArts graphic adventures, which if you watch any of our list videos, they crop up all the time, and that's why. <laughs> reveal our secrets! Yeah. Long thought about something from Grim Fandango, because the art direction in that is amazing. Intimidating me, but I'm your friend. I really like the design of um, Manny Calavera, the main character, of the skeleton head, which is sort of a rectangle with a few lines on it, but it's um, very expressive. But there's a particular artist who worked on those games uh, who I absolutely adore his work. He's called Steve Purcell. Uh, he created Sam and Max. He works at Pixar now, and he was heavily involved in Brave, but uh, he used to work on LucasArts, and he did all this incredible art for, well, Sam and Max, obviously, um, but also uh, Monkey Island. His cover for Monkey Island 2 is incredible with uh, LeChuck, um, voodoo dolling, uh, Guybrush, and he's like grabbing his head and there's like a moonlit night and it's just, it's an incredible piece of art. So maybe that, but I think there's a piece of art that he did that I absolutely adore, which was for Maniac Mansion. And it's a family portrait of the Edison family from Maniac Mansion. It's so, it's um, uh, Dr. Fred Edison, uh, Edna, and uh, their son, Weird Ed. Uh, it's a family portrait, it's got the um, tentacles in the background. Yeah, have you got it there? Yeah, we were looking at it. You're looking at it right now. Basically, I would like that as a sort of large portrait on my arm. Yeah, I think probably probably that. It's just an era of games I really like, but a kind of an artist who was involved, heavily involved in those. I really like their work. And I just think it's a cool, it's a cool picture. People think that it's your family. Yeah, well, maybe people will think it's my family. That'd be fine. <laughs> I mean, that'd be cool. Being from a mad scientist family, what's wrong with that? <laughs> Sounds great. Ellen's up next. I'm not going to say Kingdoms of Amalur because I think, uh, I mean, what can you tattoo on yourself from that? No one knows any details of Kingdoms of Amalur because Ellen's the only one who ever played it. So, <laughs> I mean, it would be a very obscure tattoo. I think she's going to go with something from Assassin's Creed, either the, you know, the Creed logo, the A thing, or maybe the words of the Creed. I reckon that's what she's going for. Okay, well, Andy needs to stop like going through my journal or something. <laughs> uh, but thing is, I, I did have a few uh, on my shortlist. One of the first ones that actually sprung to mind that is not Assassin's Creed is uh, Dishonored, the Outsiders logo, the symbol that ends up on the back of your hand if you accept the Outsiders mark. It burns from the inside. I feel like I'm standing at the edge of something. But I think for it to be like properly done, you'd have to have it done on your hand because that's where it is on any person who gets the outsider's mark. And I don't think that would be a good fit for me. So. It's not a very big canvas. Yeah, it's, I've got tiny hands. <laughs> so like if I did have that, I'd have to have it hidden somewhere else. I quite like the idea of having those little ones people have behind their ears. So then, then if you've got long hair like me, you just go, no, I don't have it. <laughs> um, I really love the Outsiders mark. I think it's quite iconic to anyone who knows the series. It looks like a compass. And it? Yeah, it does. And it's kind of like, you know, point, it's, it looks a little bit like the sword as well. That emoji with the big eye and then the line and then the little eye. Right? No. <laughs> I absolutely adore the Outsider and like the Dishonored series. I think and he got it on the nose when it came to Assassin's Creed. Benny, jump! Assassin's Creed was the game series that properly got me into console gaming because, like Andy, I kind of grew up on. 90s point and click adventure games. I love the Assassin's Creed logo because it is, it's really iconic. It's used as an icon in the game. 
And my favorite thing about it as well is that every single game has its own unique version of it. The, the Syndicate one is really cool. It's like this steampunk looking one, which I quite like. And I probably, out of all of them, would go for that one because it's set in London. Absolutely adore Jacob and Evie, Evie especially. Onward to London. <laughs> There was a big main game with a playable female protagonist who was arguably better than the male one. <laughs> it was quite, I was like, oh, nice one, Assassin's Creed. <laughs> no. Um, the other thing as well I thought of maybe is um, having a hidden blade uh, tattooed along uh, this tattoos, bit. Not just in general. Yeah, <laughs> but I think, yeah, I, I, I think I would definitely go for a little steampunk Assassin's Creed thing, possibly like hidden there so I can go ponytail ah, or have it there like where you would have the Assassin's Blade. Mike is up next. A car. <laughs> <laughs> Not even a game one. <laughs> just, a car. just a car. No, the rubber duck. Your oh, explosive yeah. duck. That was that was an amazing kill. <laughs> That's legendary. Go have this for a rat. How do I do it? There we go. Yeah, got run. Oh, you did it. Freaking right. run. I don't think they know it was Oh, wow. Well. I'm not running. Oh, my I'm God. Anyway. Jeez. Oh, my gosh. That, was so that is how we do. Something vehicular, Ellen. Well, it's a good guess. Uh, and I did think about things like Daytona USA and stuff like that, which are big parts of my sort of gaming childhood. Maybe, um, so you know the giant sort of sculpture of Sonic that is on the uh, cliff uh, in the first track of Daytona? Maybe that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I get it with the kind of rock almost like bursting out the skin. skin. Anyway. It might just look like a seductive Sonic. Yeah, it's the, it's the play hedgehog pose. Um, so that's a very good reason not to get that one. No, I, I sort of thought back to game series that have uh, like really uh, stayed with me and stuff that has an interesting art style as well uh, and I think there's one series that has really resonated with me fairly recently um, which is Dark Souls. All of the artwork in Dark Souls is amazing anyway, and all the character design and creature design and all that kind of artwork is really, really cool. And there's some really cool stuff you could get, like say the, um, the this sort of sun artwork from Solaire's chest piece is pretty, pretty cool. It's kind of an interesting uh, piece of iconography and would look quite stark and quite good as a, ta a tattoo, I think. Probably not coloured, probably like as a, a, an outline would look pretty neat. I like the snatches of positivity within Dark Souls because it's, Basically, for the most part, a very, very relentlessly bleak experience wandering through uh, Laudron. Um, but there are these moments of kind of hope and, and things like that. So uh, those are kind of cool to cling on to. And I, I also thought about the boss characters because there's some amazing boss character designs. Like if you were going sort of full kind of horror stuff, you could have like Pinwheel with his weird masks or like Gravelord Nito and stuff like that. There's some really cool like horror imagery. But I think the one thing that, that uh, I love about Dark Souls, probably more than anything else, is the bonfires. A, because it's a really, really cool design. It's a kind of, you know, a little bonfire that kind of, the sort of flames are kind of licking a sword. Um, so it's a really awesome image uh, in and of itself. But also what I like about it is those are the moments of relief and like respite within that game. Uh, so you'll be battling through a really, really tough section. And then when you finally see that bonfire, the first thing you think is, is it a trap? And am I gonna get smashed flat by a giant boulder or something? But then when you get to the bonfire, it's that moment of kind of release and rest after a really challenging section. Because it's a symbol of how hope springs eternal within the human spirit. And I think that's a, a good thing to remind yourself of uh, when you're having a, a bad day, you could just kind of look at it and go, yeah, you know what, it's probably gonna be okay. That's such a Thank you. Well, I have a car as well, just somewhere that no one can see. <laughs> see, Luke, I think, is Nintendo through and through. So it's going to be one of the big, the big three Nintendo properties. It's either going to be Mario, it's going to be Zelda, or it's going to be Pokemon. Uh, and I am going to go for. I think Breath of the Wild was probably a, an important moment for Luke this year, and it's probably fresh in his mind. So I'm going to say something from The Legend of Zelda: The Breath of the Wild. Breath of the Wild, you guess, Mike. 
Uh, well, it's a pretty good guess. <laughs> <laughs> it's, not, it's not a perfect guess. Okay. The Legend of Zelda is my favourite game series, and so when I was thinking what tattoo would I hypothetically get, I tried for quite a long time to think is there anything else I would consider before eventually working my way around to inevitably, yeah. Obviously, I would get a Zelda tattoo. And then it became like, what am I going to get for The Legend of Zelda? I thought of trying to get something from Ocarina of Time, because that's my favourite Zelda game. <laughs> it's actually fortuitous, Ellen, that you should mention that, because what I would like to get is one of the bits of music from Zelda as they appear as Ocarina notation in the game. That game is all about songs, it's all about music. I love music personally, I especially love video game music and the music from that game in particular. And I think it's really cool that they give you an instrument that you can actually play these songs on and the, and the game makes a stab at like figuring out a notation for them. So the song that I picked of all of them is the Song of Storms. A down up, A down up. I think if you weren't like a, a huge Zelda fan or a huge video game fan, you might see that and just think that it's some some bars of music, which I think would be a pretty rad tattoo in and of itself. But yeah, that would be a nice nod. I think it's the catchiest tune in the game. Nautical stuff is obviously a massive theme in general for tattoos, so Song of Storms kind of has that going for it. And in the game, the Song of Storms is really cool because you have to go to a windmill to learn it, and the guy teaches it to you when you're adult Link, and he says, oh, I'll teach you this song. I learned it from a young boy wearing green. And that's you in the past, so then you have to go back in time and play him the song that he played you as an adult, so it's got an incredible time paradox in it. So I think that's what I'd pick. So not the moon from... Uh, <laughs> 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 yeah, on my face. <laughs> Last up is Jane. I'm going to guess that she will go for maybe something from a Bioware game. There's a lot of cool stuff there. Maybe something from Mass Effect or Dragon Age. There was something from Life is Strange that I saw. When you make a decision, you get a nice little, nicely fonted thing and it says, this decision will have consequences. And there's a little butterfly and I thought, that's a hell of a tattoo right there. <laughs> so, yeah, that's my guess. I want that now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a curiously timed guess there, Luke. I'm wearing my Life is Strange Before the Storm shirt today. Uh, this would actually make a pretty good tattoo. Yeah. Also, oh. it's, it's a Life is Strange reference, but also inadvertently a Twin Peaks reference, so you get like double points. I don't need to be reminded that actions have consequences in a tattoo because the tattoo itself is a very strong reminder that your actions have permanent consequences. My tattoo, my tattoo, well, I, I have long uh, deliberated between two tattoo concepts. Let me talk you through them and then I'll make the decision here today and then not get it tattooed on me because <laughs> I'm a coward. Tattoo number one, Bioware game, yes, Mass Effect, the Paragon Angel Wing and the Renegade Star with chevrons through it, both brilliant little pieces of video game iconography. People know what they mean if they're into games or into that game, and if they don't, they're just very cool, very simple little shapes. And when I get them tattooed on my right and left fists, <laughs> You'll know whether I'm punching you with good intentions or bad <laughs> intentions. So whether it's your fault or not. <laughs> My followers are true, Krogan. Everything about Grunt is a lie. Um, maybe like right and left shoulder caps? Oh. Like epaulettes in a sort of like military style. It might be quite cool on the little little shoulder bone. Yeah, I could definitely live with something from the original Mass Effect trilogy. That would be really pretty cool. Second option, placement again is important here. Shadow of the Colossus, right? The, the Colossi, they all have these magic sigils, these sort of symmetrical mystical looking runes and they glow they look beautiful in fact i looked this up you can get like glow in the dark ink in tattoos or like uv visible ink in tattoos so you could get like an invisible tattoo that only glows under uv light and it could be like the magic sigil from shadow of the colossus one of the magic sigils and then i could put it where i like the sticking point is that implies it's my magical weak spot where i die <laughs> if you stab me Put it somewhere where you won't die if you get 
it's down. But where is that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> into, cool into, into thinking they found my Achilles heel. So it's a, it's a cool uh, icon and it's not immediately obvious it's a game reference. I like references that if you know it, you know it. If you don't, then maybe you can just enjoy it in an aesthetic way. And I quite enjoy the aesthetic of the Shadow of the Colossus runes. Um, if I had to pick one of them, I think I'm probably more attached to the sigil idea and that's not a reflection of which game I care about more. Oh, but then if you ask me tomorrow, I'll probably say the Mass Effect like Paragon Renegade icon. So ask me again tomorrow. Today, <laughs> today, it's the Shadow of the Colossus sigil. <laughs> So there are some of the video game themed tattoo ideas that we've thought over in our heads and thought, oh, it might be a good idea, but tattoos are permanent, so maybe we'll think on it a little bit more. But if you've got a tattoo, let us know, a video game themed one, let us know in the comments down below. If you're thinking of getting one, let us know below, and they might be better ideas than ours, and then we'll take them and actually go get a tattoo. But do remember, if you are considering this, these are permanent things you'll get forever. So uh, like me, you know, I'd like to get the entire score of the Kingdoms of Avalon music music on my back but it's a bit <laughs> I've got a thing I'll have that for the rest of my life if I do that uh, but do let us know down below which was your favorite out of all of our choices and uh, if you enjoyed this video maybe you should click here for more lots of fantastic things of us talking about video games and if you want to hear from more of our stuff in future you should click the subscribe orb and uh, you should get the subscribe orb yeah everyone should get <laughs> No don't do that guys <laughs> see you next time <laughs>